Michelle from the Wilcox Sci Center, and today I'd like to share with you how we use the OptiViews RTU SDOCT here in our practice. We have created instructional videos that not only share the technical side of capture grid images, but also the tricks of the trade we've acquired over years of patient testing. We have created three videos, which include our glaucoma protocol, our retina protocol, and scleral lens imaging. I hope you enjoy. This glaucoma video is the longest of the three, for it includes many unwritten techniques that we employ to both capture great images and to help coach a patient as needed. All right, I'm going to search for Mr. Kirkwood's name. I can go in the database by patient name. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to find him, which is going to be in alphabetical order. All right, I'm going to find him. I'm going to select him. And then I'm going to hit on New Visit tab. And that's going to date stamp the visit with today's date so we know when the test was performed. And when it's an existing patient, the only two pieces of information that you're going to have to provide is the physician, which we have just Dr. Wilcox here, and the operator, which is Michelle. Once I select those two pieces of information, I'm going to hit save and examine. That's going to save it and take me right into my protocol list, which I'm going to select the type of test that's going to be performed. And with Mr. Kirkland here, we're going to start um, with glaucoma. I'm going to hit our protocol tab. The protocol tab are tests that are arranged according to each facility. You can select any order of tests and you can create a protocol and name it. We've done so with glaucoma and retina. This is a glaucoma initial. This would be the difference would be this would include a 3D disc which is going to be used as a, a reference in any uh, following exams and or just a regular glaucoma which does not have the 3D disc so this would be a follow-up. This is not going to be an initial or a retina extended which is going to um, include all of the cross line and we do a 3D reference which um, is going to again be the reference for any future visits. So we're going to start with the um, glaucoma examination and Mr. Kirkley I believe has had a glaucoma examination before so I'm going to have select the GCC and we're going to start with the right eye. I never have the patient in the chin rest before I have it set up because they're uncomfortable and they're going to be sitting there long enough, so I don't want them sitting there any longer. So now that I have everything set up, I'm going to have him bring his chin in here. All the way to the bottom, they put these nice little marks here, horizontal lines, that you're going to line up with his canthus. I'm going to raise that up. Now I can see him kind of budging forward, so he's stretching, so I'm going to lower the table a little bit so he's comfortable. Are you comfortable? Yes. I'm going to verify that with the patient. And then I'm going to start here at the GCC with the right eye. Okay, the camera's going to come up. And what's going to happen is I'm going to line the crosshair in the center of his pupil. And you see the reflex there. Now, you want, you're going to get the, the crosshair in the center using the joystick. Now, the joystick, if you go clockwise, that's going to raise it. If you go counterclockwise, that's going to lower it. And so I'm going to put the crosshair using the joystick. This is going to make fine movements. Once I get the crosshair lined up, that's when I'm going to slowly move my instrument in. And as you see, you're going to start seeing the retina. And that's what I want to see. Now the scan is going to start coming up from the bottom. Now if you go in too far, you see the scan goes up and it flips over and it's upside down. We don't want that, so you've got to back up a little bit. We want the scan to be in the center. Instruct the patient to look at the blue light. You can remember that by the color of the screen, the blue light. Blink, blink. And again, he's looking at the blue light. I'm just using my joystick here to find adjust the picture. I want the scan to be around the center of these top two screens here. Now this the slight movement here is his breathing, so I'm gonna kind of look at the pattern and look at his blink pattern to see. Obviously I want to get it when he's not taking a deep breath or when he's not when he's blinking. So blink. I found that the more you tell the patient not to blink, the more they do blink. So I usually just try and look for the pattern. 
Then you hit the image and make sure all the images are good. You hit save, the little floppy disk icon. That's going to save it. Now, if I didn't want to save it, I would have hit the four lines. That's going to open it back up and give me an active scan, and I'm going to redo it. So I hit the save icon because I do want to save it. I'm going to hit the four lines here. That's going to automatically take me to the next scan for that eye, which is going to be his optic nerve head. Now, he is using it's his right eye, so the blue light has now shifted to his left. So he's looking around. You can see he doesn't see it. It's dark over here. I have to slide it over a little bit. Now, you see the blue light, sir? Yes. Now he could see it. When the patient starts looking around, it's because they can't see the blue light because it's kind of off to the left, so it's going in and out of their viewing area. So you want to make sure that you tell them, instruct them to look to the left. And this would be for the right eye. Of course, it's going to be vice versa. If you could look at the blue light, sir. All right, now I'm going to use, again, the joystick. I'm going to find adjust. We want to place the crosshair in the center of the cup. Now you want it to be the deepest part of the cup. This is of great importance when the person has papilledema. You want to make sure you're getting the deepest part of the cup so we have a good comparison a cup to disc ratio. So keep your eye on that blue light for me. Now if you click on these images up here, you can scroll them up or down. Now you can see this up here, this, this is a pretty good cup. This one I feel like can be a little better, so I'm going to move. You see how it's getting deep and then it's going away? It's because he's moving around and it's not where the crosshair needs to be. We want to put this image into the center of the screen as much as possible. All right, keep your eye on that blue light. Now I'm going to fine adjust. You see that this kind of this reflection popping up over here. I want to fine tune that with the joystick to get that out. Now the quality of the image is going to be shown over here. This is showing you the signal strength, how good it is. Of course you want to get green if possible, not always. Blink. That can be adjusted a little bit with their tear film. I've found that people with poor tear film are going to have um, the signal strength is going to be lower, so it's going to be the quality of the picture is not going to be as good. Blink. Keep your eye on that blue light. So I got yellow, so he was drying out a little bit. So I'm going to hit the four lines. I'm not going to save it. I'm going to try again. Close your eyes for a second. Okay, go ahead and open. That's a better image. We have some glare over here. Our patient's not dilated, so it's a little, it's a little tougher. Plus, we have all the lights on in here. But um, so now I'm looking at the quality of the photo, how good is the cup, and how visible are the RPE tips. And to me, that's a that's a good photo. We have the T snit over here shown. That's everything's shown there. We have them pretty much in the center of all four boxes. So I'm going to say that this photo is good. We're going to save it by hitting the floppy disk icon again. It's going to take a second. Now it's going to give me this, this box here. It's labeled RPE tips. Now I'm going to move these yellow boxes up or down to line up with the RPE tips. So I'm going to take this box and line it up there. I'm going to take this one and I always move it out of the way. They, they line it up for you. They meaning the computer. I always double check and I like to line it up visually according to what I'm seeing. And sometimes if they're not, the RP, RPE tips are not visible, you could hit this arrow. It's going to give you different alternate images. And you can say, oh, well, that one's better. I can really see the RPE tips in this one. Because the better you can see them, the better you're going to mark it and the more accurate the photo is going to be and the comparison. So. I like that one. I'm going to match it all up and I'm going to hit OK. That's going to save my RPE tips. Now, I'm going to hit next image. It's going to tell me to move over to the left eye. This is incorrect eye because I'm still in the right eye position. Okay, I'm sliding the instrument over to the left eye. I'm going to hit OK. 
Okay. All right, so now I'm going to go in. I'm going to do his, continue to do his GCC. We're over on now on the left eye. And we're again instructing the patient to keep their eye on the blue light and to blink. And I'm using the joystick to fine adjust here. We're trying to eliminate as much glare as possible off to the side and darkness. Now, if the patient's had cataract surgery, you're going to see a lot more reflections over here on the side from the eye well, which is normal. Blink, okay, look at the blue light. It's a good photo, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna again go to the optic nerve head, it's gonna automatically take me there. He's now looking to his right, the light shifted. I'm gonna slide my instrument over a little bit so he can visibly see the blue light. And I'm just sliding this crosshair here to put into the cup. Now my eyes are here and I'm looking here to make sure as I'm moving this around, the cup is also moving. So I'm looking as I'm sliding this around to see what I think is the deepest part of the cup. All right, once I feel that I got the crosshair here, in the, in the deepest part of this cup. I'm going to take the image. I'm going to save it by hitting the floppy disk icon. And again, this is giving me all my RPE tips. And I'm moving those yellow circles to line up here with the RPE tips. And again, if some of them are not visible on either of these two photos, feel free to hit the arrow up or down to change the images. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. I like that. Now, uh, Mr. Prickly here was an existing glaucoma patient, but we are going to pretend he's not. So we can do a 3D disc. We're going to do it on his left eye here. Okay, so the 3D disc is very similar to the optic nerve head. There again, they're looking, this is his left eye, so he's looking off to his right. And we're going to put the crosshair in the center. In the center of the optic nerve head. And he has a kind of a pattern if you watch he looks and then he has a fixation loss for a couple seconds and then he focuses blank and a lot of patients are like that close your eye for a second now this is usually is very exhausting for the patient so whenever they can close their eyes I have them close and relax so he um, he moved a little bit here in the beginning you can see the movement and the black here is because his eye was, eyelid was closed, so that's not a good image. If this was a patient that was extremely hard, I could save it because the optic nerve is intact. But being the overachiever that I am, I usually try a little, a little longer. Okay, blank. Some patients are just, you know, they're difficult. They look around, they blink you know, like a strobe light, and it's impossible to get a good image. So at that point, that's when you want to just try to get the optic nerve intact, and then um, that way so you can at least draw your 3D disc. Blink. Blink. Go ahead and blink. Once I take that photo, and I, you can hear, you know, you can either take the photo by hitting the three line or the four line button or by hitting the top button on the joystick. Either one of those will take the photo. Once you take the photo, after you hear that click, the photo's already been taken. When we first got the instrument, we were mistaken by thinking that once that the patient had to stay still until all 106 photos came up. That is not true. 
once you snap it, it's already taken the 106 photos, and the patient can move. So, that was a little FYI there. That's a good photo. There's no movement. I can see his optic nerve clear. And sometimes you'll have a good photo, but the kind of um, change in fixation for the patient, you'll have a split where, you know, something's not lined up. That's how you know they moved. So you need to have to do it again. But this is a great photo. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the floppy disk button again. Now at this point, I'm finished with his test. I know I am. So I'm going to tell him to go ahead and sit back. And I'm going to review the photos to see how they look. I'm going to hit Analyze tab up at the top. Now that's going to give me all the photos I did today. Now the important thing is to remember if the patient is under 18 years of age, their photos are not going to have all the pretty colors. It's not going to compare this patient with a normal data because there is no normal data because they're a child. So what we do here is we like to change the birthday of the patient, um, usually by 10 years of documenting in the chart, of course, and that way so we have the pretty colors to show us in the future the comparison of you know change and things like that. So now this, we know Mr. Kirkley, his fovea is pretty much non-existent, which is what you see here. Normally I would think that that was false and I would probably redo it, but because I know Mr. Kirkley and that he, he does have a little bit of thickening here and he doesn't have a fovea, well he does, but visually it's difficult to see. So um, I would probably redo this just because of that. And as Dr. Wilcox always says and is yelling in my ear, there are never any straight lines in the eye. So I'd probably redo that. Um, so I'm going to review, keep on going all over my review. I'm going to take a look at the optic nerve head. And that's going to show us our T-SNIT, which is down here, which is temporal superior, superior nasal inferior and temporal, which is basically this line spread out into one line. We're taking it and we're opening it up and we're reviewing it down here. So this is, he's green here, so he's not thinning. If there is um, a thinning here or a loss, it would be red and that should correlate with the GCC as well. If you have one and not the other, it could be um, the patient was moving, it could have been, you know, um, operator error, things like that. So I'm taking a look at this, this looks good. He's, you know, along the line here, he's in the green, it's pretty. Keep on going, I'm going to take a look at the left GCC. And he has some loss here, so I would redo that just to confirm. Especially when it's, if it's a new loss, we would want to redo it just to again confirm that it is indeed there. So now I'm going to, we have a left eye optic nerve head and the left eye 3D disc. So I always, when I have both, review the 3D disc first because what happens is if you make any changes it's going to affect the optic nerve head of the left eye and so you will have to review it anyway to save it and to compare it. So I'm just going to go right to the 3D disc first so I'm not going back and forth. Once the image comes up, I'm going to look at it. It's, um, it's a quality image. Sometimes when you take it, it looks like it's a good image, but then when you actually are reviewing it and you have it on the full screen like this, you see some, some problems and you'll have to redo it. Okay, and so I'm going to look at it. I'm going to right click. It's going to say um, show disk. I'm going to click on that because I want to see. Now, you see how well the computer drew the disk, so that's not right. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw it, hit draw disk because I want to manually draw it and save it. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to draw, um, once you use the, you're going to use the cursor here and when you 
click, it's going to give you a little circle, and then you, you're basically going to kind of etch a sketch the outside of the optic nerve. Now this is where you got to get real close and look and be very critical. We try not to draw on the actual nerves. Sometimes some optic nerves are very hard to draw because they have PPA or whatever's going on and it's hard to actually get the full definition of just the optic nerve, you know, trying to figure out what we're drawing here. Once we get to the end, you, the last one, you double click and it's going to complete your circle for you. So let's see, I'm going to bring this green line up horizontal. We're going to bring it, we're going to put it right into the center, through the center of the cup. We're going to use our vertical line which is going to be the red one right here. We're going to move that. When we're, move, when we're going to take a look at the sides, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the green line in the center. I'm moving the red line. Now what I'm doing is as I'm moving this red line here, it's moving it down here. So my eyes are going here and here, here and here. So I'm going to make sure that where I drew this to be the end of the optic nerve, is indeed the end of the optic nerve. So here's the RPE tips. We want it to line up, this red line to be lined up with the RPE tips. You can kind of toggle this back and forth to see how it changes and it's pretty much good. We're ending it right about here. It has this kind of a split off right here but then it goes down here. I'm going to go quickly to this side over here and I'm pretty, pretty much right on the money here that side that's good so now that I've done the sides I'm going to take a look at the top and the bottom so that I'm going to have to put the red horizontal or excuse me the red vertical line in the center and now we're going to use our green horizontal line to look at over this image over here which is going to be the top and the bottom so I'm moving this green line and again I'm putting it at the top now you see how this comes this RPE tips come down and then there's a big gap well and they kind of reappear here. So that's the nerve, that's the shadow casted. So I'm going to toggle this red line back and forth here just to see if I'm where I need to be. And if you look at it, I am pretty much right where I need to be. So this was the cat, this was the shadow we were seeing before. And see, that's not, that's not where we would end. We would come down here. So that was only, you know, you got to kind of move around so that it doesn't make a liar out of you. Good. Okay, and once you get it where you want it, you right click and you hit save as baseline. So what that's going to do is when you click save as baseline, it's now using this image is going to be your image to compare with every optic nerve head picture you have saved. So you have to go and reprocess all of the saved optic nerve heads for that eye. So since I am now saving this for the left eye, I'm going to go view this left eye optic nerve head. And this will be front. This is today's visit. It's reprocessing it with the information I just saved with, again, our new 3D disc for the left eye. And it looks pretty similar to the right. His right one was kind of over on this side, the left one over there. He's along the line. The T snit's good, it's in the green. So now, since I reprocessed the left 3D disc, I have to go back into the patient's tab. I have to go look at his other, he's had a ton of other existing visits. And so I'm gonna go through and look at them to see, click, select which visit you want, then you go to analyze tab. I am looking for what other 3D, or excuse me, whatever left eye optic nerve heads he's had done in the past to reprocess it. This one is not, this is a retina, so I'm going to go back out. I don't need to do anything on that one. Go back up, analyze this. All right, so right here, he's had a left optic nerve head done. This was back in 2008, so now it's going to reprocess the data with what I have just drawn as my new baseline.
include this section of our um, instru inner instructional video of glaucoma, um, there's a couple things I want to review with the patient as far as how the patient sits of the instrument can cause poor images. I just want to go over a few of those things. If you'll slide forward for me, Mr. Kirkley. All right, one, make sure the patient's chin is firmly against the bottom. A lot of times they like to go with their mouths open. We are not the dentist, we are the eye doctor. So I tell them make sure your teeth are closed and your chin's on the bottom and your forehead's against the top. You have some people that have very small faces, so their eyes are gonna be down, but they have a big forehead. So you have to make sure their canthus is lined up with this horizontal line that they give you on the side. My hand movements are, my hand's always gonna be here. What I do is I use the, my hand to go in and out, big movements, and then I use my right hand to find adjust with the joystick. I don't want to hit the patient. I don't want to wham in. I don't want to hit their nose. I don't want to startle them, especially if you have a cam lens on the end. You definitely don't want to go flying into the face and hit them in the eye. So that's why I always use this, go very slow, and then I use my hand once I get in to find adjust. Some patients, um, you have the patients that breathe heavy. <sighs> and you have to try to get a photo. Well, they're moving up and down, up and down. Again, I try to look at the breathing pattern, not always successful in that area. So sometimes I do have them hold their breath for just a second. Again, you take one second and it's 106 photos. So I think they can hold their breath for a second. You have the patients that are inpatient or uncomfortable. Type of thing, all moving around. I always say, ma'am or sir, I'll be happy to put your hands right here on both sides to keep you steady. You need to do that. Because um, again, their hands cannot be in the front because you will not be able to go in and out. And have them do that, do a few, and then have them sit back, review those few, then have them come forward. You have the, um, the obese patients that are, have big breasts. Um, what you're going to have that her do, hopefully, is you're going to have her back up a little bit. And I usually have her kind of let them hang down and bring your chin in that way. You will have to lower the instrument a little bit more because again, she's stretching from back here. But if you have her trying to slam forward, she's not gonna get her chin in there and she's gonna be like this. Her chin may be in there, but her forehead's not. You're gonna have instrument all the way in and you're not gonna be able to see anything because she's too far back. Um, let's see, and then you have the patients that like to fall asleep on you. Um, I'm pretty good at yelling at them and I just I'm saying you know sometimes I stand up because then they know that you're getting that you want you know you want to get this done I'll say sir just keep your eye on that light okay keep your you know you touch them you keep them awake any way you can you um, you know sometimes turn the light on if you have to and obviously if they're falling asleep holding their lid is not going to help because their eye is still rolling in the back of their head and you kind of need their eye so those are a few little tips that I've come across with my patients. Um, and then you have some that take a couple seconds and are very good. But other than that, that concludes our glaucoma and we stay tuned for the rest of our videos. Thank you.